All right, let's see if things are in English. Yes, load the data. Yay! Thanks. Sanji is not on Spotify, yeah. Oh yeah, the story begins. I mean, that last stream ended, or that last recording ended abruptly because I broke things, but don't worry. At least we're up to the newest version of Citra. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. It was a girl. Her name was Espella. According to her, she had been on the run with a former student of mine, Carmine Accidenti. I hate that name still. What exactly were they running from? She also had a letter from Carmine regarding the many mysteries of a town called Labyrinthia. No, oh, you're not gonna talk about the part where she was kidnapped by the witches? <laughs> Here, I'm gonna talk to, to you first. Wow. Oh. Hey, you there! This area is off limits! The only Scotland Yard personnel allowed here. Hang on. No, oh, it's you, Leighton. What are you two doing here? Well, it's been a while, Professor er, Inspector Chelmy. Has there been some kind of incident? Hmm, well, more like an accident than an incident. Uh, over there, a motor vehicle has been heavily damaged. A heavily damaged vehicle, you say? That sounds rather serious. But I doubt that Scott that a Scotland Yard inspector would be involved in something as mundane as a simple traffic accident. Yeah, an accident, if you will. Is there perhaps something unusual about this particular accident? As always, you're quick to pick up on the finer points. I should say there's something unusual. In fact, I've never seen nor heard of an accident as unusual as this one. Barton! Would you leave the talking to me? Uh, yes, sir. Of, of course, sir. An unusual accident. Calm down, tell me your blood pressure. Unusual in what way, precisely? Don't go concerning yourself with it. It's the job of the police to solve this case. You never know, Inspector. I may just be able to help you solve it. What are you saying? Even I don't have all the facts yet. Goos aren't just that easy to come by, you know. Yes, we got nothing so far. In fact, I'm sure we could use a helping hand. Oi! Martin! I thought I told you. I'll do all the talking. Uh, yes, sir. Understood, sir. Uh, just a moment. Mm, I've got it. Hey, Leighton. What is it, Inspector? I, uh, well, that is to say, if you're so keen on getting involved, why not go and uh, take a look for yourself? That was a sudden change of heart because he knows he can use us, Luke. It was, Luke, but a welcome one, wouldn't you say? Very well, Inspector. I will take a look. The vehicle is just up ahead there, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. In the park just over there, if you know where I mean. The park is fairly big, so it's quite easy to lose your way. Mm, I suppose I'll have to explain. But listen up. I'm only saying this once. When you want to go somewhere else, touch the move icon in the bottom right corner. Touch this to change from investigation mode to movement mode. Places you can move to are places indicated by red markers. Touch the search after moving to go back into investigation mode. Incidentally, you're free to move to any location indicated by a red marker. This is a convenient way of moving since you can move a great distance with only a single touch. Was that, is that the new transportation method? Your fourth wall, yeah. Uh -huh. Look at the map and touch our desired location. Is that that's right, isn't it, Inspector? That's right. So now that you know what to do, why don't you go and take a look? Oh, but don't forget, if you find anything, be sure to come and let me know. We'll be waiting to hear from you, Professor. I think the unusual accident they were talking about. Indeed, it could well have something to do with our own investigation. Let's go and take a look at the scene of the accident, Luke. We may find some clues. Right you are, Professor! <sighs> when I hear back from them, I may just be able to make something of this case. With the backlog of cases I got piled up, I have to take help where I can get it. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, that's his leg. That's a big passenger ship. Maybe the kidnapper took Miss Espella there? Oh. Hit coin! But I don't. It's okay. Fourth walls are meant to be broken, just like the rules. Oh. Haha! 
all the hint coins got did. Let's move. Da -da -da -da. God, I love <laughs> I love their little icons so much. Oh, uh, I really hope that Phoenix and Maya have the same kind of icons. Oh, oh, now he's drinking tea. Where did you get that tea, prof Professor? Where did you get that tea? Okay, let's go up here. Yep. I swear, if we have a full party of four RPG looking Phoenix Wright people, enlightened people, I'm gonna go nuts. Professor, look over there! There's a car up in that tree! <gasps> this certainly is out of the ordinary. I've never seen anything quite like it. Like Constable Barton said, it seems extremely unusual. I mean, how on earth could something like this happen? Hmm, we'll need to investigate this closely. He is. He's probably also a, like a black mage. Let's take a closer look at the car. I mean, look at his tiny beady eyes. I mean, you actually do have a portable tea set in the second game. So, Whoa, look at all these people. There's a lot of car parts down there. The more I see it, the stranger it looks. It's as if the car just flew up there. Certainly taking some damage. You don't think, could the witches have done this? It's certainly possible. It would appear the accident occurred only moments ago. Hmm. Wait, what's that mark on the car? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, gentlemen. Yes, you too. Would you just stop right there? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. This is the scene of an accident, and we haven't finished investigating it yet. As you can no doubt see, it's all rather mysterious. I don't know yet know the exact cause of this here mishap. Not a safe place for spectators, I'm afraid. I'll have to ask both of you to move along. We're not spectators. We've been given permission from Inspector Chelmy. From the inspector, you say? So you're here officially then, are you? In what capacity, may I ask? Luke the Bard. What would Phoenix be, a barbarian? Well, not officially as such. The name's Herschel Layton. I'm an archaeologist. You're pulling my leg! You mean to tell me that you're the famous Professor Layton? Nah, that you mention it, you certainly do resemble the good professor. I mean, that hat. Of course he does! He is the professor! So, Constable, if you don't mind, may we investigate a little closer? I've been put in charge here, so I can't afford to be wrong about this. For all I know, you might just be impersonating Professor Layton. What? Oh, come on! If you're the real Professor Layton, then I'm sure you'll have no trouble solving this puzzle! I fucking knew it! <laughs> you son of a bitch! He's <laughs> a warrior, yeah. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Let me see what you have. All right, take a look at this. You're just... He's just like, oh my god, it's Professor Layton. I want to see him solve a puzzle with my own eyes. You know, usually people have to pay for that right, Constable. Puzzle three. Wait, what was puzzle two? Where's puzzle two? I did Puzzle one was the witches. What was puzzle two? Did I miss puzzle two? This puzzle is worth 25 picarats. The local police force is assisting a museum to increase its security. The guard's torches allow them to spot anything up to three squares away. Do your best not to be seen and sneakily make your way out of the room. <laughs> what is Metal Gear Layton? I don't know how I missed a puzzle. I don't. Like, there was just a lot of talking. Unless there was a hidden puzzle. Yeah, touch the arrows on the touch screen to move in the direction indicated. Each time you move one space, so too will your opponents. Remember that your opponents will turn around and repeat their paths. Do not stand in front of their line of sight or they will see you. If they do see you, you will be moved back to the previous space. Reach the exit without your opponent seeing you. You can also use the control pad or the circle pad to move. Okay. Ugh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh god! Oh god!
Okay, so he doesn't turn until then. Okay. <laughs> nope, it's still. <laughs> That's right, Leighton. Stealth 100. Well done. You managed to stay hidden in the darkness and make it out. Yes. Whatever he said, he probably was like, this sounds about right. I did it. That's it. You solved it. Judging by the way you solved that puzzle, there's no doubt that you must be the one and only Professor Leighton. Yes, that was very Japanese, Andy. Of course, from the very start, I had a fairly good idea that it was you, Professor. From the very start, you seem to have your doubts, Constable. Yeah, we apparently broke Citra into making it Japanese. I don't know. Well, anyway, feel free to investigate as you wish. Um, but uh, there's one last thing. Yes? Later, when you've got a free moment, would you mind signing my helmet? I do it! No. Are you sure that's allowed? Come on, Luke, let's take a look around before the constable changes his mind. Tell me, Luke, did you notice anything strange when we looked at the car? Anything strange? Well, to be honest, the entire accident is pretty unusual. Well, yes, but if we're to suppose this accident occurred naturally, then there is one particular mark that should not be there. A mark that shouldn't be there. Ah! Professor, the handprint! There's a handprint on the bonnet! That's the hood. Well spotted, Luke. But a handprint of that size is too big to be left by any normal person. Yeah, the bonnet. <laughs> That's what they really call that the bonnet of the... I thought the bonnet would be like the top of the car. The yeah, aluminium. Indeed, it would almost appear to have been left by a hand of a giant. That's a bit far-fetched. Apparently. That's the root. The, uh, the, but the bonnet goes over your head. <laughs> Why would the hood be the bonnet? I'm so confused right now. Uh, just say it. <sighs> Isn't there anything in this park that grabs your attention? But Professor, from here I can't see anything strange other than that car! Yeah, dang. In a situation like this, we need to zoom in, Luke. Uh, zoom in? In some cases, there is something tr something is too far away or is hidden behind another object. We can zoom in to see it more clearly. When you see something of interest, use the magnifying glass to look closer. When the magnifying glass turns blue, it means something important is there. By zooming in, we may be able to uncover some new clues. Okay, Professor, I'll zoom in now. Wow, I like that I went on this site and it's like, yeah, we have the thing. And then it's like, actually, this is illegal, so go buy a real version. And I'm like, cool. If I could ever find one, thanks. Oh, that didn't work right. Oh, none of this is doing anything. Ugh. Yeah, when the magnifying glass turns blue, just touch the area, right? That's right, Luke. Now let's give it a try. 
Okay. Boop. Real. Enhance. Hey, that statue's hand. It's about the same size as the handprint on the car. Do you think the car hit that hand when it crashed? That is a possibility, of course. However, the handprint on the car is a right handprint, Luke. R right hand? What about the other statue? The statue is holding a spear in its right hand. Which means that couldn't be where the handprint came from. Quite right, my boy. Yeah. And it would certainly appear that this is more than a simple traffic accident. I wonder what could have happened. Mm, if the handprint was made by the statue. Do, 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 do. Surely the statue couldn't have moved? I'm positive there's some kind of secret behind this, and whatever it may be, we can be certain it's related to the witch that took Espella. I think so too, Professor. How else could this accident have occurred? We investigate more closely, perhaps we'll find some clues. No, Luke. First we should head back to see the inspector. Really? But all he seems to say is how unusual it seems. Well, yes, however, there is one more subject about which I'd like to ask him. Oh, what's that? Not what, my boy, but rather... Who? <laughs> yeah. Who was in the car when it crashed? Ah! Hmm. Okay. Return to Chelmy. Well, let me see if I can find some pink coins first, though. Like there. Ba -da 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 -da. Onlookers have started gathering at the scene. Look at that short man. Okay, um. <sighs> There's a handprint on the car. It's almost as if the statue somehow grabbed hold of the bonnet. Let's go back and see the inspector. There could be other clues. Can't believe the freaking bonnet. Biscuits and cookies are wrong, and now there's bonnets instead of hoods? I, what else is there? What kind of wacky world do you guys live in? There's tire tracks. Where is the freaking hint coin? There's got to be a third one. Yep. Zed. The heavy rain has made the ground very slippery. Yeah, I know, Britain. Doing things. Okay, well... Oh, wait. Third hit coin. Uh, -da -da. Oh, it tells you when there's hidden puzzles. So, uh, what did you think? It's no simple accident, is it? Well, I already know what, a sl what, what sla slang for a cigarette is. The thing is, there's nothing wrong with that slang for the cigarette. It's just what people turned it into, which was dumb. I'll bet this one's even surprised the great Professor Layton, hasn't it? Without a doubt, this is no ordinary accident. May I ask how the driver was? <clears> hmm, <throat> he wasn't seriously hurt. He's a real jammy dodger, that one. In fact, we're about to take him into custody for questioning. Strictly private, I'm afraid. Inspector Chelmy, there's something I would like to know. Um, what's that, then? The driver's name, was it by any chance Carmine Accidenti? Eh? That was the devil! Where'd you get that information? <laughs> oh, well, you could say a uh, little bird told me. He's something of an unlucky yet lucky type, always getting himself into trouble only to miraculously escape unharmed. An acquaintance of yours, is he? He attended my lectures a few years back. An outstanding student. Is that so? Well, perhaps you should have lectured him and I had to stay out of trouble. We've had our eye on him for some time. He's a bit of a maverick, that detective. Always sniffing out dangerous situations and poking his nose into trouble. Unlucky isn't the half of it. I tell you, I wasn't surprised to find him involved in this ruckus. And... Whoops! I hope that didn't... Okay, cool. 
Sorry, I, I realized I was downloading another version of it to see if I could fix, like, maybe the... Maybe I just have to get another English version to see if it fixes it. Um, but then I closed my browser and I was like, oh, crap. But thankfully, it didn't stop the download. Professor, that means this must be the incident in which Carmine was attacked. Yes, it would seem so. What's this? Know something I don't do you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Nothing at all, Inspector. <laughs> I was hoping he might just come up with something I could use. Never mind. Now I've got that detective. Maybe... I may be able to wring something from him. I'd really like to know how such an accident occurred. Uh, Inspector, just one other question. Is there any evidence to suggest that Carmine was not alone in that car? What's that? Someone else in the car? No, there's nothing to suggest that. Is that so? Well, was there anything else unusual about the accident that you haven't mentioned? Anything else unusual? Hmm, no, not as far as I'm aware. Wait a minute, we did see those strange people in Halloween costumes. Huh? Hmm? Oi, Barton! Like I said before, I'll do the talking! Uh, yes, Inspector. Uh, sorry, Inspector. These people in Halloween costumes, can you tell me anything about them? Um, you're certainly persistent, Layton. To be honest with you, I don't think they had anything to do with it. We saw a group of them loitering around Tower Bridge. I decided to question them, but when I took my eyes off them for a second, they just disappeared. Wonder what in blazes they were up to, wandering around dressed like that. When precisely was this? Mm, just a moment ago. About the same time you went to the park. Halloween costumes? Professor, could it be? Hmm, I see what you mean. Seems we may have a lead. Wait, is it... But it wasn't Christmas. Thank you for your help, Inspector. Now, hold on. Just what's this all about? Well, we seem to have come to the right place, all right. Yes, it would appear the witches attacked Espella and Carmine in the park before coming after Espella and abducting her from my office. Following that, they must have made their way from here to Tower Bridge. We may still catch up with them if we hurry. Let's go. To the Tower Bridge! <laughs> professor's former student, Carmine Accidenti, who gave Espella a letter for the professor, was involved in a car crash while they were being pursued by witches. What was he investigating in the labyrinth? The news of Carmine's accident came as a shock, but at least he survived. I would like to have discussed things with him. I don't want to check something. No hidden puzzles. Yeah, how did I miss puzzle two? Large bridge over the River Thames that is also a well-known London landmark. Punk. <clears throat> you, you put a meme in there. What meme did you put in there? But <laughs> it's very good. Yes, that's this entire series. Puzzling intensifies. Bum, bum. There's no one here. Wait, Twitter, what are you doing? Why are you showing a Lodi symbol? Twitter, are you okay? Are you sick? Anyway. Now there's no one here. This is puzzling. I'd normally expect to see more people here at this time, and you know how much I love puzzling. Hmm. Must be the bad weather. I guess no one wants to go out in this. That could be it, although I'm also sensing something of a peculiar presence in the air. Eh? Professor, don't talk like that. Boom. Whoa! Th th that made me jump! Luke, over there! <sighs> Oh, is that a witch? Um... Okay, bye! <laughs> I guess! Yikes! What was that? I bet it was one of them! Uh, professor, let's follow it! It's a Dementor. Just a moment, Luke. There's something we should review before we go running off. The method of entering a building is a little different to that of regular movement. Sometimes when moving the magnifying glass during investigation mode, 
the cursor will change to a yellow arrow. This indicates a means of direct entry. You can also enter while in movement mode. Simply touch enter to do so, but it's not nearly as interesting. Touch the yellow arrow in investigation mode or enter in movement mode, right? That's r that's it, my boy. Try not to forget. All right, then let's make haste. Okay, well, first things first. Hint coins. Oh, yeah, 40. Uh, flag. Beautiful flag. Hint coin, hint coin. We need to investigate the shadow that we saw ahead of us. Also, how are you doing, control issues? Welcome on in. Could be a Dementor. Luke, we must follow the shadow that vanished further down the bridge. Yeah, I know, but hit coins. Hit coin! Okay, follow the- follow. Da, 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 da. <gasps> what in the- that thing just disappeared into thin air? Hmm, well, I certainly don't feel that same presence I did just a moment ago. Hey, Professor, what's that? <gasps> dun, 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 discarded hood! About to make some tea? You drink it too fast? Oh, welcome. I have, gosh, I need to get better at making tea. Wait, isn't that Professor? It's Espella's cloak! Yes, it certainly looks like the cloak she was wearing. Espella, where could she have gone? Hmm? Luke, take a look at that. On the wall there, just next to the cloak. Eh? Hey, there's some kind of mysterious pattern engraved there. Indeed, I believe this may demand a closer investigation. You mean, like, zooming? Okay, that wasn't... Uh, I was expecting a little bit more dramatic of a zoom. What do you think this pattern is all about? Well, I can't say it's a pattern I've ever seen before. I wonder what a mark like this could be doing here. Wait a second, that figure disappeared right around here, didn't it? That's right, not to mention... The Spella's cloak is lying right here in front of this wall. Without doubt, there must be some kind of clue as to Espella's whereabouts. Let's check it out! Wait, can you hear something? Hmm. P -p professor The wall's moving! <gasps> Puzzle! Four! Walled in. Ooh, 40 pick rats. The sudden shifting has dislodged a number of bricks from the wall. Drag the blocks along the wall and arrange them so the design on the wall is properly displayed. Move a block yet. Blocks will automatically fall into holes with which they fit perfectly. Use the design pattern on the wall to help you arrange the blocks. That's wrong. Okay, I think I'm gonna use the controller for this because it's a little awkward. Oops. Why are you moving? Oh, because I'm pressing B. Down. Aha! Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 Boom! What is that? Oh, that goes down there. Eh. <laughs> Schwonk. Um That feels like it goes right there. <gasps> da -da 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 so good at puzzles! That goes there by that Dorito looking motherfucker. And then that goes in there. Ah! Ha! <gasps> it glowed. Yes. <laughs> he sounds like he's like. He's like saying something like he just like beheaded a man and he's saying like his his one liner. Dang, Leighton, calm down. Excellent. A powerful powerful tremor begins to resonate from the wall. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, look, Professor, the wall. in there sacrifice oh it's deep what is this place what's a place like this doing behind the wall hmm, it appears to have been here for some time i wonder who could have made this place and why it's so dark i can barely see uh, a spella professor we've got to search for a spella indeed she could be here somewhere Although... So, could that witch... Precisely. We should proceed with caution. Okay. Okay. Something's wrapped in a piece of cloth. What can it be? <gasps> Whoa! Legs! Those look like Espella's legs. I hope the rest of her body is there. Oh, Professor, over there! What's this? Quickly, let's get her on her feet! Oh! Puzzle! Oh no! <laughs> Help Espella! <laughs> oh. Espella's hands have been tightly tied behind her back. Quickly, untie her! Which rope, A or B, will not result in a knot when pulled... When both ends of the rope are pulled at the same time? Yeah, no! No putting her back together! Show the matchstick! She got run over by a car! <laughs> okay. So... If you pull on both ends... Okay, yeah, it, it would have to be... Because that... The left side's underneath, so... If everything was underneath, neath, it would have to be... A, because I think if it was B... Yeah, then it would just tie the knot tighter. A! No, I fucked up! <laughs> My train of thought sucks, apparently! Oh no, the knight! Look at him! He's so sad! What? Okay, well, it's B. Wait, how come... Oh, no, oh, jeez, that took a lot. Wait, because... Oh, because the rope's crossing on the top! I am dumb. Sorry, everybody. I didn't think about that. <sighs> we did it this time! He's happy! Man, those Picarats, though. The spell is free! Just exactly what occurred here. I don't know, but it's time to steal her back. Uh, Spella, are you alright? Mr. Layton, it's really you. No, I didn't want to tie her up, okay? I don't... Don't be rude. Okay, let me check something really quick. Um, um, um. Sorry, things got a little bit weird because I was uh, moving something around. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Mr. Light, okay, you really did come and rescue me. Of course, I'm a gentleman. Uh, yes! 
As I've said, it is the duty of every gentleman to save a lady in trouble. Thank you, Mr. Layton. It's my duty too, as an apprentice gentleman. Ah, Professor, I think they're coming back. I don't sense any immediate danger, but be sure to stand your guard, Luke. Right, now hurry and leave this place. Oh, hi. Hey, Seer. How are you doing today? There's no escaping them. Eh? Carmine tried many times to lead me away from the witches. But as you have seen, we were unable to escape them for long. Uh-oh. What should we do, Professor? Hmm? hmm? I don't know. Maybe we should get a knife. There's always. It's fine. Oh, no! Oh, no! Uh... Oh no! That figure from before! <laughs> Professor, I can hear something! It's coming from the end of the corridor! Just as I thought. Mr. Layton, if we stay here, they'll find us! Uh, this is bad, Professor! They're getting closer and closer! Hmm. Please, at least save yourselves! Hmm. Don't worry, there may be a way out of this. And then he pulls out, like, a gun. I know we made that joke before, but... Hmm? Leave this to me. Alright. There's not much time, so listen carefully. <laughs> Professor, they're nearly here! And there are lots of them! Okay, we should be all set. Let's get going, Luke. Ah, uh, look at that. That's a lot of witches. Oh my god, they're gonna. Are they gonna. Oh no! Are they really gonna jump for the boat? <laughs> I feel like he's gonna jump for the boat. Not to- No! Her cloak! Or her- Huh? Hi! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Jebated! I'll be taking that. Yeah, take that, witch. Ha-ha! Wait, don't come out. We're hi- you're supposed to be- Yeah, don't worry. He he'll be fine. He's Professor Layton. He can't die. Oh, whoa! So you enjoy playing silly little tricks. <laughs> well, it seems you underestimated us. You didn't think we'd just give ourselves up, did you? <laughs> so tell me, just who are you witches? And why are you so determined to capture a Spella? Fools. Hmm? It's yourselves you should be more concerned about. You have any idea of what it means to involve yourself with that girl? It would seem not. But what do you mean? <laughs> you probably didn't need that translated, but I did it anyway. The pair of you have unknowingly walked right into the middle of the story. Oh no! In the middle of the story? You'll soon see what I mean. With your very own eyes. Okay, thanks. Bye! P professor! She just disappeared! Yeah, now you know the middle of the story. Wow, spoilers. I wonder what she could have meant by that. I don't know, but I have a bad feeling about all of this. You think she's trying to scare us because she lost? Hmm. At any rate, we should try to reach Espella. I know where that ship was heading. Let's head to the port and meet Espella when she arrives. Right. And then we can give her back this book. Huh? Huh? Professor, the book, it's... 
Hmm. Um, don't tell me it's gonna like fly over to her, I guess. Oh, hello. Oh. Yeah, is a Oh, that's why the book, because it keeps changing every time we do stuff. That's why it changed when we looked at it, because it's like, probably was like, they read the book. Um, 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 um. Hello? No. Oh, no. To be continued. Well. Well, we did choose our own adventure, apparently. You want? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to save, please. Oh boy. Yeah, magic book. It tells the story. Wait. <laughs> the guy's just eating a freaking mm -hmm. chocolate bar. Why? Why is he? What? Goosebumps. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, what? Oh no, it's the badger! Wait, is the- What is happening?! What?! Hello?! Why did you just kill a person?! Oh, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, come on, it's gonna melt. English turnabout. Wow. Very good. That's- That's great. Ah, <sighs> uh, I'm feeling queasy. Come on, Nick. It's just like I said. Oh, uh, Maya, what do you mean? You're such a worry word. I knew you'd get all jittery before the trial. It's not like that. It's just I didn't expect to have to stand in a foreign court. Yeah, we don't know much about the court system here. Uh, the legal league of attorneys would like this to be an exemplary case. Hmm, so that would make you an exemplary attorney. I hope you don't infect any British lawyers with your nervous attitude. Shut up, Maya! You're making it sound like I'm a virus or something. Okay, well... My name is Phoenix Wright. I'm a defense attorney. Defense with a C! <laughs> because we're in Britain, get it? Uh, and this is Maya Fay, my uh, assistant of sorts. Of sorts? Uh, I guess I should explain why she's dressed up like that. But it's a long story and we don't have the time. We've come to England on the legal attorney- or the Legal League of Attorneys Exchange. I'm acting as a representative of the American Legal League. You know, they probably sent you because you don't ever seem to be busy. Wow. Rude. We aren't supposed to stand in court, so we thought it'd be like a vacation. But here we are. As usual, we've been dragged into a strange case. Defense looks better with the C. Hey, Nick, so what do you suppose this trial's all about? What if it was this? Look, check out today's newspaper. Elusive jewel thieves at large in London, Scotland Yard on red alert. Oh, look at Chelmy there. Wouldn't that be cool? Ugh, Maya, don't get your hopes up. We're here on an exchange. It should be a simple textbook trial. <laughs> really? London's a big city. What are the odds of us getting a case like that? Oh, boy. Well, that's boring. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh! How do you do? Oh! Miss Darklaw? Oh. It's Bella! Hi. You're- Why are you wearing a schoolgirl uniform? <laughs> Hello? Oh. 
Oh, that's not good. Dark Lord, did you drug this girl? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> uh, Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. Pleased to meet you. Um. Uh, I'm Phoenix Wright, your attorney. Pleased to meet you. What's with this girl? Can't she hear me? This girl, uh, the defendant in today's case. Hey, Google. Reduce office lights to 60%. Uh, 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 that is correct. She's the pupil I'd like you to represent. She's pleading guilty, so there's not much you need to do. Excuse me? Pleading guilty? I suggest you accept the punishment proposed by the prosecution. What? What? What kind of request is that? Um, Espella? What are you accused of? Maya, can't you tell if there's something wrong with her? Have you not received the case materials? Uh, no, we haven't, and we weren't told anything. My, my, forgive me for this oversight. Here, this is the case file. Attorney, defendant, the court hearing will begin now. Please proceed to the courtroom. Well then, I entrust Espella to you. There we go. That's, wait, what? No way, I didn't even have time to look through the case file. Espella, please be a good girl and don't cause any trouble. This girl ain't right. I'm... Did she just mumble something? I'm... Not a witch. Okay! Uh, Espella? What did you just say? Maya! Chop, chop, defense! Let's not keep everyone waiting! Oh, God. This is... Well... And so, another trial begins. And as always, I've got no idea what's going to happen. Oh, she's so, so cute, though. All right, let's do it, Nick. Yeah. Mind control. Witch powers. Yeah, something. Drugs. What if Miss Darklaw is, a, is the witch queen? Who the, is that another pain? Who are you? <laughs> Oh god! Is this what judges look like in England? Uh, is <laughs> under? Is this your normal English judge with the hair and the tiny glasses and the cravat? The court is now in session for the trial of Espella Cantabella. <sighs> Flinch! So there's pain and flinch. Are you kidding me? You thought the barista? Maybe. I don't know. The prosecution is ready, your honor. How about the defense? Are you ready? Uh, um, yes. Well, I guess you could call it ready, your honor, with a U. Hmm. I hear that it's your first appearance in a British court. Well, yes, that's right. <laughs> the legal league of attorneys exchange was it sounds like fun hope you're enjoying the sight you can take it easy today he don't worry prosecutor flinch will take care of everything his voice in japanese is exactly a sh like a shitty person dude as i thought it would be it's great he's treating us like amateurs nick Oh boy, this looks bad. Can I really defend this girl? When... Ah, I see. Well, since this is your first case here, I will ask you a few simple questions to make sure we're all on the same page. Oh, uh, yes, that's, that's fine by me. Dang, time to sink or swim. Answer my questions then, Mr. Wright. Mm -hmm. 
Duh. Sorry, I had to respond to something really quick. What is the name of the defendant? Uh, 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 uh it, Darklaw. No, it's Spella. Uh, that would be Spella Cantabella, your honor. I am a master defense attorney. That is correct. Whew, that's the first hurdle. Hmm, I see you're terribly proud of yourself for answering that basic question. Ugh. Let's move on to the next question. Wait, there's the menu. Um, look, it's me. Oh, I love his little, like, chibi, uh, uh, items. This is the letter hand. Oh, wait, I still have the same items as before. Uh, puzzle index. Phoenix is like, what is this? Where is puzzle two? First time in England. Okay. I like how options is my, uh, yeah, there's default, but yeah, you can't, you can't change the language. I just have to try it. Okay. What is the nature of the offense? Hmm. What crime is Espella accused of? You know, Espella seems like such a timid girl. You think it's something minor, like shoplifting? Maybe. I wouldn't call it minor, though. Can't be anything major like that large-scale jewel theft. Please answer the question. Can you name the two offenses? Um, did he just say two? Nick, think, what other petty offense could it be? I don't know, I'm clueless about this case. We weren't told anything about it at all. <laughs> my, my, could it be that our esteemed visitor left his common sense back home? <laughs> all the evidence is in the court record. You haven't forgotten that, have you? <laughs> ah, that's it, the court record. Right, that's what you always refer to, the, the court record. I, I touch the court, yeah, my court record icon wasn't there. Police report. Theft and assault. Note, inflicted light injuries. Okay, so she didn't kill anybody. Light injury, laceration to the back of the head. Hit with a long, blunt object. Wow. Yeah, it must have slipped my mind. This must be the nerves. Boom, boom, ba boom, boom. Right, color instead of cut. Really? Is it because you don't feel like writing that extra U? The court record holds all the evidence from this case. I better take a look. Right, defense, you've had enough time to ponder my question. What is Miss Cantabella accused of? Theft and assault? Well, according to the case outline, it was uh, theft and assault. Indeed, what disgusting crimes! Oh, does it? Interesting. Hm. Is that correct, defendant? Yes. No kidding. She doesn't look like a violent girl, at least not to me. Bonk. Now that's settled, Prosecutor Flinch. Please briefly outline the case for the court. Yes, your honor. The incident took place on a small freighter moored at a harbor in the River Thames. The freighter was carrying goods away from London. The defendant illegally boarded the ship and tried to steal some of its cargo. But she was discovered by a crew member and captured by the ship's security guard. So she was caught red-handed and she violently resisted when found by a crew member, violently resisted. Indeed, she picked up a steel pipe and hit the crew member in the head. Uh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder why they don't... Huh. Like, I don't even know who made CSS. Was that in... Where was that invented at? Like, I never really think too much about, like, the technical aspects of where things were originated from. Sounds pretty vicious. So that's the assault she's accused of. And what the, de the defendant attempt to steal from the freighter? A stuffed toy, your honor. It's the Metropolitan Police mascot, PC Badger. Wow, so it's Blue Bat, they stole Blue Badger. Oh, Nick, I want one. I see that mascot made a career for itself in England. Who would have thought? 
I think we have a clear picture of the incident now. The prosecution may begin. Hey, Mel, welcome. The prosecution calls its first witness. Please bring him in. There's something fishy about this trial. And there's something even fishier about my client. There isn't an ounce of expression on her face. I'd better keep my eyes wide open. Oh. <clears throat> Witness, state your name and profession. A ship is always at risk at every hour, minute, and second. That's where I come in. I am a peacekeeper. The one and only guardian to an otherwise defenseless ship. The name Smiles. Johnny Smiles. Security Guard Supreme. I... immediately hate him. Get him out of my courtroom, please. Uh, yes, according to the police report, the witness was patrolling the freighter on the night of the crime. Yeah, I was patrolling the freighter and my expertly trained eyes leave nothing unseen. Okay, he's just always has chocolate. I'll go blind if he keeps smiling like that. Very well, Mr. Smiles, we would like to hear your testimony. Describe what happened during your night patrol. Yes, sir! Johnny Smiles will reveal all! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, where's your hat? Oh, you came back, apparently. His chocolate is now closed. Patrolling on the night of the crime. That night, I went on patrol as usual. Z-Z-Z-O. My keen ears latched onto some suspicious noises coming from the cargo hold. <laughs> I sprinted at full speed to the cargo hold, but I was too late to stop the blow. The next moment, I captured the criminal, expertly. Within seconds, I had established that there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. Be a clue somehow, yeah, probably. What if there's chocolate on the blue badger, the PC badger? Hmm. And so, the woman you arrested was... Uh, <clears throat> it was the defendant, Espella Cantabella, sir. And as per standard patrolling procedure, all lights were on and you saw her clearly. Is that correct, Mr. Smiles? Ye yes sir, I am an expert after all. Hmm? Is it just me or did he hesitate before saying that? The defense may cross-examine the witness. Ye yes sir! Oh, I'm starting to talk like that guy. Let's see now how skilled our visiting barrister is. Yes. By the way, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Our cross-examination procedure should be the same as anywhere else. But just in case, would you like to have it explained to you? Uh, there's no need. I know how to cross-examine. Okay, good. At least they give me that option. No, thank you. I'm fine. I press the witness on all suspicious statements to gather information. And then when there's a contradiction, I present evidence. Just like I always do. Okay, let's do it, Nick. Bonk. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. <laughs> Patrolling on the night of the crime. <clears throat> What the hell does ZZZO mean? Um, what's ZZZO? Ah, <sighs> oh, that's right! It's not something you'd know not being a security professional. That's our special jargon. It's how we talk about our time in the trade. Let me get this straight, Mr. Professional. You're using letters to tell the time? See, ZZZO stands for 2220, which is 1020 p.m. Uh, right, so 1020 p.m. That's very accurate. How can you be so sure about the time? Because <clears throat> that's what he does. Um, well, that's when the TV show I always watch in the security room ends. Uh, TV show? I 
I'm meant to do the rounds at 10 p.m., but for a pro like me, it's just a guideline. That's not... That doesn't sound very professional, yeah. Anyway, I was patrolling the ship like I do every night. Yeah, that's not... Your Honor, uh, may I... What is it, Professor Flinch? I would like to get the event straight while referring to this crime scene photo. <clears throat> yeah. The defendant and crew member were fighting in the back of the cargo hold, is that correct? Yes, sir, they were fighting right under that emergency light. Hmm. So, so, the item spilling out of the broken crate. Indeed, that crate was broken by the defendant with a steel pipe. Incidentally, the item we can see spilling out are stuffed toys depicting London's own police mascot, PC Badger. <clears throat> I see. The, crim the crime scene photo shall be added to the court record. Okay. The witness may continue his testimony. Yeah, but he totally was out of line. Your keen eyes, their ears, lash onto some suspicious press. What the? <laughs> Hold it! I'm gonna have to get used to that. And when you heard these noises, you immediately found them suspicious? Stop throwing your hat and doing that, please! That's right! An expert of my caliber can always tell when a noise is suspicious. When my smiley scent starts tingling, it means there's a crime taking place. So, can you tell us more about the noises you heard? It was, uh, that's right, the sound of two women fighting. <laughs> Naturally, I sprang into action, and I arrived at the crime scene in the blink of an eye. In other words, you went to the cargo hold because you heard strange noises, is that correct? It might be a boomerang. Maybe it's just wheeling around the courtroom now until later. He also has infinite chocolate, which is why the women love him. Just for his chocolate, though. Yeah, that's about it. I'm back to where I started. Okay. <clears throat> what the? The blow? You like him too? Yeah. The defendant, Miss Cantabella, hit the crew member with a steel pipe, didn't she? Stop throwing your Jesus every single time. Yes, that's right. As I opened the door to the cargo hold, the defendant struck the victim's head. Had I arrived a second earlier, I would have gladly stopped the blow with my own head. What? I don't think the, the second would have made much of a difference. Don't take this expert too seriously, Maya. The witness saw the defendant deal the blow. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I expertly witnessed the crime with my very own sparkling eyes. Is that so? I see. It looks like the judge is just falling asleep. He is asleep. The next moment, I capture the criminal expertly. Do, 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 do. He can claim the assailant was Miss Cantabella. Precisely! Naturally, she abandoned all hope seeing a security pro like myself join the scene. She dropped that steel pipe she was holding to the floor with a clank! Hmm, I see, I see. That's what a guilty person would do in that situation. Exactly, Your Honor. There is no need to continue this cross-examination. Ugh. Are you sure you didn't notice anything unusual about the cargo hold? Not a thing! Well, aside from the defendants uh, swinging that pipe around. Could someone else have been hiding in that room? Oh, jeez, he's got the same crazy pain voice. The security guard patrolling the freighter is responsible for checking every corner. He would have spotted an intruder right away. Isn't that so, witness? Um, yes, I carry my trusty pocket torch for precisely such a task. 
Yeah, most guards are dumb. Yeah, I know. I'd have noticed anything suspicious in an instant. Hmm? What is it, Maya? Um, I was just looking at the evidence in the court record, and I get the feeling there's something funny about his this testimony. You're saying there's a <gasps> contradiction? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you've had to deal with a lot of that before. So that's all he has to say. Well, Nick, what do you think? We managed to get our hands on some new evidence, but, uh... <laughs> Pressing alone can only get us so far. <laughs> um, yeah, that means it's time to present evidence to the court. Present evidence. Compare what the witness is saying with the evidence in the court record. Sometimes they won't match up, and that means they're not telling the whole truth. Right. Thanks, Maya. Come on, you're making it look as if I'm the attorney here. Touch the court record icon to compare evidence in the testimony. Yeah, okay. Let's try that. Spella may be saying she's guilty, but that doesn't mean this witness is telling us the whole story. I need to uncover the truth by myself. Oh, you can use hint coins during the trial? That must be why we started off with 30 of them. Okay. Um. What about this box that's open? Oh, you can, you can zoom it. What is that? What's in there? I like the fact that you can zoom. That's actually pretty great. Oh god, these things? This one looks like it's on. Well, they all look like they're on drugs. Dun, dun, dun. EI! You're saying that there was nothing out of order in the cargo hold. Well, that's a bit funny. Huh? The point is, one of the crates in the cargo hold appears to have been tampered with. Yeah, that looks pretty darn out of order. Ah, yeah, that! The defendant must have smashed it with the pipe. Nothing odd about it. <laughs> no, you dumb bitch. Something else. Please take a look at the crime scene photo. There's this broken crate here where the fight took place, but also... There's another crate here that seems kind of strange, don't you think? Darg! This crate, sitting quite a distance away from where the fight took place, appears to have been forced open. Isn't this the sort of thing a security guard should immediately notice? Yeah, exactly. Um... You testified that you established there was nothing out of order at the crime scene. So how come you didn't notice something so obvious? Arr! I don't know, maybe because he sucked? Order, order! That's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, particularly for someone claiming to be an expert. Whether the witness is an expert or not, it bears no relevance to this case. Actually, it does, because if he sucks at his job, why should we believe him? Uh, what matters is that he saw the defendant hit the victim with a steel pipe. What you just said. I'm afraid I can't let that slide. I excuse me? I am an expert guard. Focused, thorough, precise, a true professional. To prove it, I will testify once more. You're all dying to know why I ignored that one crate, huh? <laughs> huh? What? What? Very well, the witness shall continue his testimony. 
so many hats. I mean, they do live in Britain. They have a lot of hats in Britain, I think. What excuse do you think he'll come up with, Nick? Who knows? I've got a bad feeling about this, though. What did he actually see? What if he was still wearing his sunglasses? What I saw at the crime scene. It's only natural I missed the other crate. The lights on the cargo hold weren't on. You just said that everything was lit, bro. But it's not lit. Yeah, he said that they were on! But of course I had this, a guard's best friend. His trusty pocket torch. Thanks for blinding me. The emergency light was on mine, so it wasn't so dark I couldn't see. I saw the girl stand right in front of the crew member as she attacked. And there was no one else in that room. You have Johnny's word for it. Yeah, the cargo hood is, holds his lit. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait a moment. The, this security company claims that the lights were on during the patrol. Yes, yes, that's the official procedure, you see. But those light controls can be such a pain in the... I Wait, no, that's not it. I mean... Uh, oh, man, you have to share that with us, Seer. The truth is an expert like me doesn't need those lights to do his work. That's not how that works. Not when I've got this! The focused beam of my trusty torch cuts through darkness like a laser. The witness will refrain from pointing the torch in this direction. Justice may be blind, but I'd rather not be. I like this judge. I mean, I like the normal judge. Because he's super bumbly and everything, but I, I think I like this one too. He's a good judge. Yep, sorry, your honor. This trusty torch shall be added to the court record as evidence. Torch added to the court record. Ew, what is that? Oh god, his eyes got bit. What did you just see? What is it, your honor? This, this pocket torch is covered in something sticky. <laughs> oh no. Ah. It seems my sweet little buddy's been up to some mischief. I, oh, I don't like, I hate that. That, <laughs> those combinations of this is sticky and your sweet little buddy, I, oh, sweet little buddy. Do you mean your chocolate? Johnny left sticky fingerprints all over his flashlight. Ugh, don't. Look at me, I'm not touching it. <sighs> the defense may cross-examine the witness. I'm not touching that either. What I saw at the crime scene, okay. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, uh, but the menu. Wait, close. Wait, why can't I look at the court record right now? I guess that's covered in chocolate fingerprints. Wait, are there chocolate fingerprints on anything in this room? What if there are chocolate fingerprints on the pipe? What if there's chocolate fingerprints on the on you on the shoes? Anyway, I'm grasping at things here. Okay. Press! But that! According to the rules, the lights have to be on, is that right? Don't spread the news, but between you and me, I'm not very good with the light controls on that ship. Even a security expert like me has their flaws, you know? No, that's bad, you need to learn those things. That's a part of your job. So he just neglected his duty. 
Didn't you say before you are focused and thorough and precise, a true professional? Yes, that's true, of course. Always focused, thorough, and precise, except when I'm cutting the odd corner. <laughs> I aim to be a well-balanced professional, you know? That's not what that means. Um, yes. Even Flinch looks unsure of how to handle this guy, yeah. Oh, Flinch. What the? A guard's best friend? You mean that flashlight? Stop! Stop! Flashlight, it's a pocket torch! Ever watch crime dramas? Torchlit night patrols and all that? I've always thought it looked so cool. In fact, that's why I became a security guard. Because you like the way a flashlight looks? Really? That's a unique reason. Uh, by the way, what about the chocolate smudges on the flashlight? Uh, torch. A well-prepared guard has a torch in his right hand and a chocolate bar in his left. Is this true, Seer? Is that, uh, is that a necessity? Okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I don't think you're allowed to have food on the job. Standard issue chocolate bar. It's like an emergency ration. I'm so hot on security issues that it tends to melt. So the flashlight is covered in fingerprints from his sticky right hand. You've definitely walked out of patrols eating snacks. Ugh. The emergency light was on mine, so it wasn't so dark I couldn't see. Okay. Bar <laughs> barbecue ribs, yeah. And just like have two corn dogs walking down the aisles. You're not messy, yeah. An emergency light? The defendant and the crew member fought under that emergency light. Ah, oh, yes, there it is in the back of the room. Yes, sir! The cargo hold was faintly lit up by that little red light there. But the regular lights are on in this picture. Well, yeah, I switched them on before the police came. What? I didn't want to risk my bright career over my slightly different take on the rules. After all, I am an expert. It's all in the details. You're an expert, all right. An expert in bending the rules. Oh, small, you know, I gotcha, yeah. Saw a girl stand right in front of the crew member as she attacked. What the? And you saw that clearly. Yes, I got there, opened the door, and then bam, that's when it happened. I felt it in my shades. They spoke to me. Johnny, you're looking at a crime here. Uh, huh? Wait a second, you were wearing sunglasses? Yeah, what's a security guard without a pair of shades? These babies are a part of me, you dumb bastard. No. W witness, you were patrolling on the freighter with sunglasses on. Yeah, he, apparently he does wear sunglasses at night. Of course I was. Whatever I do, I do it with style. It's a bit, is a bit of vanity a crime? Don't you wear your specs for the same reason? Vanity? I wear them because I'm short-sighted, I'll have you know. You've got that right, Flinch. So, Johnny... Oh, God. Wow. I think Phoenix just made a superb jab at this man. So, Johnny had sunglasses on in a dimly lit room. Do you think he actually managed to see anything? Nick, check the court record. There might be a contradiction in Johnny's testimony. Dun, dun. Well, I mean, what else would there be? I mean, there's also shoes on the ground. Why are there shoes on the ground? And whatever that is. I know, a teapot maybe. <clears throat> so that might be a contradiction. Witness, continue your testimony. Oh, 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 duh. Yay! You're sure the defendant was standing right in front of the crew member? 
Absolutely. They were facing each other the entire time. Well, that's weird because it clearly contradicts this evidence. They're trying to get- Why? No, that's too early. Lame. After 3 a.m. today and one on Monday- Ugh. Someone called- <sighs> Of course. What, what do you mean? According to the victim's medical report, the blow was dealt to the back of the head. Uh, the, the back of the head. Do you understand now? If they were facing each other, there's no way the victim could have been hit from behind. E yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Bonk. Son of a- wow. Witness, can you offer an explanation for this contradiction? My eyes are so large. Uh, yes, explain yourself. It's the first time I'm hearing of this. Uh, yes, sir, I, uh, uh it's, uh, it's strange, uh, isn't it? Look, his chocolate is all bent now. You bent your chocolate, Johnny Smiles. How could you? I'm totally sure they, they were fighting face to face. I'd swear this melting chocolate bar on it. It doesn't look like he's lying, but then... Hey, Nick, look at me. Why do you have the pipe? What are you doing, Maya? I was just checking if I could hit the back of your head while you were facing me. It doesn't seem doable, especially for someone as vertically challenged as me. How about you keep your dangerous little experiments inside your head, Maya? I kind of like living, thanks. At least we've learned a couple of important things. First, that this witness is unreliable. And second, uh, that the prosecution didn't investigate this case properly. If my gut feeling is right, there's much more to this case than meets the eye. Now's my chance, what should I do? What? <laughs> wait, what do you mean wait and see what happens? What? I, usually when you wait, it's bad. Oh no! I, I mean, I guess plead not guilty. Your honor, the defense asserts once more that the defendant, Espella Cantabella, is innocent. What? what? This is foolishness! Oh, okay, well, uh... Just who do you think you are, anyway? Waltzing in here with your ridiculous assumptions? Balderdash, I say! That's not how it was supposed to be! Hmm? What did he just say? Not how it was supposed to be. In light of this new development, the court's opinion is that the defendant is in no way cleared of suspicion. However, the witness's testimony has proven unreliable. It's more like it. Looks like I'm starting to win over the judge. And don't forget that the defendant admits all charges. Surely her guilt is beyond doubt. The defendant is just a schoolgirl. You can't go on her confession alone. So far, we have established only one thing. That Mr. Smiles is neither an expert nor even a reliable witness. Oh, shit. Fucking going at the jugular. Phoenix Wright, you're gonna destroy this man's whole career. Oh. In my long six month career as a security guard, never has my professionalism and expertise been questioned. Six months? You dumb bat. That's not a career. That's a part time job. Yeah, Mr. Smiles is Mr. Frowns. <laughs> Isn't six months barely past the probation period? You're saying Goldilocks there is innocent. In other words, that she didn't assault anyone. And that she didn't steal this toy? Isn't that so, Mr. Lawyer? Yes, at least we have yet to see any proof that she tried to steal it. <laughs> I got you there. Huh? What? Got me? How? I have. 
a decisive piece of evidence. My hat! No, the proof that the girl was trying to kidnap PC Badger. What? You, you do? Even, Pl even Flinch is shocked. When I seized the girl at the crime scene, she was clasping this in her hand. She didn't even seem to notice. And uh, what would that be? It, it would appear to be PC uh, Badger's tag, your honor. Now that you mention it, this mascot does have some sort of ill-fitting tag attached. What's this engraved on the tag? Is that an address? Oh, you mean there's an address written on there? It would appear to be Scotland Yard's in their telephone number. It is Scotland Yard's mascot after all. This tag, it's been ripped from one of the PC Badger's toys. Yes, sir. The suspect was caught in the act of nicking this very toy. A police constable badger, do you need ones under? The tag was ripped off during the fight. What? Well, what? Then this tag is... What we have here is the decisive evidence that she was trying to steal the cargo. Sorry, there was a lot going on and I lost track of what I was doing. No way! I wasn't expecting evidence like that. Witness, I was never informed of such evidence. If you had this in your possession, why didn't you hand it to the police? Uh, sorry, Mr. Prosecutor. I'm an expert at what I do, and my expert advice told myself was that I'd better keep this as my secret weapon. That's fucking illegal. You can't just be like, this is decipher. It has to go through the police. That's what makes it, like, official evidence. Well, because they like saying Scotland Yard. I don't know, because that's what they keep saying in Professor Layton, Zunder. So I waited for the right moment to single-handedly settle this trial because everybody knows that Chelmy is the best investigator. Ugh. Looks like Flinch and I are both in uncharted waters now. This tag is vital evidence. It will be added to the court record. Tag torn from PC Badger. Espella was clasping it in her hand when seized by smiles. Stop eating your dumb chocolate. Well... They're just, they like that, they like that name. It rolls off the tongue way better than London Police. Um, defense? Uh, Mr. Wright, was it? <laughs> yes, Prosecutor Flinch. Your appearance in this court was a very hastily decided affair. That's true. Mm, that call from the Attorney's Association came out of nowhere. Perhaps in all the confusion, the request from your client escaped your attention. Were you not instructed to accept the sentence proposed by the prosecution? Hmm? Come to think of it, Miss Darklaw did say something about that before the trial. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably true. She's pleading guilty, so there's not much that you need to do. Okay, Darklaw, you're hot, but I think that you're evil. You're probably the witch queen. I suggest you accept the punishment proposed by the prosecution. You just want her to go to jail so you can keep an eye on her. That's what you were asked to do. You have convinced us all of your skills, so your good name sh will not suffer. Hm. Why not simply admit defeat? Or admit the defendant is guilty and call it a day? Hmm? No. Uh, hmm. What do you say to that, Mr. Wright? Depending on your stance on this matter, the court may now pass the verdict. My stance? That's something I don't need to think twice about. Yeah, hot and evil. The defense requests that the trial continue. What? The defense stands by its assertion that Espella Cantabella is not guilty. Hmm, very well, Mr. Wright. If that's your desire, then I too have a request to make. Your Honor. Yes, Prosecutor Flinch. The prosecution calls its second witness. Oh, Descent of the brig. Hey, wait a second. What about me? Uh, come on, guys. Don't forget about Johnny. <laughs> Let me start from the top. No detail omitted. He'll send her somewhere. Oh, where's that, Sir? Mm. I suggest you leave the witness stand and go back to witnessing your crimes on television. Y yes. Yeah, get out of here. Yes! <laughs> it's okay. 
Let's go to the brig together, Seer. There's probably cool things down there. I believe a break is in order. The court will now adjourn for a 15 minute break. Mr. Flinch, prepare your witness. Is that understood? Yeah, no, no, it was a, sometimes it, it, it kinda, like I'll see stuff happen on the bot and then it'll happen over there all at once. Also, I noticed this shirt is like ridiculously blue. I wonder if that's like fucking with my, my camera. Cause I do look extra pale. It's fine. The defense has no objections. Looks like Flinch finally got serious about this case. And that means the real game starts now. Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. To be continued. Da, 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 da. Do I want to save? Yeah. Is that it was a scuba suit? Uh, it's it's actually just a um a polyester shirt that I wear to not get sunburned when I go on long um scooter rides because I'm still out in the sun. Um, so that way I don't get because it's got like you know ninety five or whatever SPF, so I don't have to worry about getting burned. Anyway, we're gonna end this recording for right now because I need to get more water, but we will continue this trial. <laughs>